Good morning students. In the previous class, we see how to solve the given system of equation by matrix inversion method. The system of equation is given. Then to solve by using a matrix inversion method. The formula is x is equal to a inverse b. And also we see some practical problem that is word problem. Now in this video also we see some on practical problem. You see, one big question is the prices of three commodities A, B and C are rupees X, Y and Z per unit respectively. That is one three commodities per unit of each and every commodity given is X, Y and Z. That is one unit of A is rupees X, one unit of B is rupees Y and one unit of C is rupees Z. Next, your person P, first of all one person whose name is P purchases 4 units of B. The person B purchases 4 units of B and sells 2 units of A and 5 units of C. So a person purchases 1 item and sells 2 items. Same. The person Q purchases 2 units of C. Okay. Purchases means buy. Buying 2 units of C and sells 3 units of A and 1 unit of B. He is the second person Q. And the person R is a purchases 1 unit of A and sells 3 units of B and 1 unit of C. So there will be 3 persons. All the 3 persons is a purchases 1 item and sells 2 items. Next, in the process. Okay, in all the three process, P, Q and R, that is all the three persons and rupees 15,000, 1000 and 4,000 respectively. That means the person P, according to this situation, and rupees 15,000 and means gain. Second person Q is gain 1000 rupees. Third person gain is 4000 rupees. Then our question is, Find the prices for unit of A, B and C. So to find the prices of each and every unit of A, B and C. One unit of A is rupees X. One unit of B is rupees Y. And one unit of C is rupees Z. So to find the value of X, Y and Z, you see the bracket, use the matrix inversion method. Now we solve the problem in matrix inversion method. You understand the question? The concept of the question is there will be a three persons. All the three persons is a purchases one item, that is one commodity, and it sells a two commodity. But in all the three cases, all the three persons are M. M means a gain. So now we hear purchases means buy. So we go to market or any shop, we purchase some item. We must pay the money. So here yeah, we will be taking the purchases is loss. That is we give amount. And it sells. We sell some item or object. We have some money. So we will be taking it is a gain. So here yeah, treated purchases is a negative. And it sells is a positive. Okay. Then all the three cases. All the three persons are M. That is gain. So gain will be taken here. Positive symbol. And the loss is will be taken, it is a negative symbol. When we purchase some item, our money will go. So it will be treated, it is minus. We sell some, some object, we have money, so it will be taken, it is a plus. So the first step to form an equation according to our given. So 
So framing an equation is a very important. So we framing a three equations, okay, by the given data. We framing an equation. First, we go to move the person. A person P purchases four units of B. So first, we take the person P who purchases four units of B. Purchases buying. So our amount will go in. So purchases how many units? Four units of B. One unit of B is Y. So four units of B is four Y. But we purchase it. so minus four y. Wow. Next, and it says we sell, we are gain. So using the symbol is plus sells two units of a. So one unit of a is x. Two units of a is two x. He sells so plus two x. And also he sell one more item plus two x. And 5 units of a C. 1 unit of C is Z. So 5 units of C is 5Z. Plus 5Z. In all the process, you see the last. Okay, in the process, P, Q and R. So now we write the person P. The person P and rupees are 15,000. Okay, is some amount so rupees 15,000 so the framing and equation is very important the person P purchases so minus 4 units of B 4Y and it sells plus 2 units of A again we sell 5 units of C finally and rupees of 15,000 suppose he loses 15,000 we put a symbol is minus. But we add, so we put positive symbol. Next we write in order. Order means always in x, y, z. First we write the coefficient of x term, y term and z term. So first 2x plus 2x. Next y term. So coefficient of y is minus 4. So minus 4y plus 5z is equal to 15,000. Lastly, we put the amount symbol. First, we write just the number. So now we frame a first equation. In the same way, now we create the another two equation. Now we move the person Q. So person P over. Next, we move the person Q. The person Q purchases two units of a C. Purchases means minus. How many units? Two units of C. So how to write? Minus 2c to z. Because a person Q purchases two units of a C. One unit of C is z. Two units of C is minus 2c. And the sales cell per symbol sells three units of A. First we write three units of A whose symbol is plus 3x. One unit of A is x. Three unit of A is a 3x. And one unit of B, one unit of B, one unit of B is Y. So plus 1 into Y. So in this case, the person, the person Q and second one, rupees 1000. Rupees 1000. I tell again, the person Q purchases two units of a C and it sells three units of a, a and also sells one unit of B and rupees a thousand. Now we write in order so 3x. 1 into y is y plus y minus 2z is equal to thousand. Second one, wow. Now we move the person R. Person P, Q, R over. Now we move person R. The same process. Person R 
purchases how many unit? One unit of A. How to write? Minus one unit of X. Purchases so minus one unit of A. One unit of A is X. And sales. Okay, sales means positive. How many unit of B? Three units of B. How to write? Plus three. Y. Three units of B. And one unit of C is also cell. So plus how many unit? One unit of C. One unit of C is one Z. Plus one in B Z. So in this process, the person R. So that person rupees four thousand. If they the person R is rupees four thousand. Rupees four thousand. How to write? Minus X. We write in order minus x plus 3y plus z is equal to 4000. So it is the first step. So the framing these three equations is very important. Suppose we have to do one small mistake instead of minus a plus or instead of plus is minus, the answer is not. So the first very important step is the given sum is converted into this equation. Now we solve the three equations. Okay. Now we solve the three equations by a matrix inversion method. The next step to convert the given system of these three equations in a matrix equation. You know the working rule. These three equations to form a matrix equation. What is the first step? We form a matrix. The first row contains the coefficient of x, y, z lies in the first equation. So it is the first equation. So the first equation coefficient of x, y, z are 2, minus 4, 5. So we frame in an equation 2, minus 4, 5. Okay. 2, minus 4, 5. Next. Second equation coefficient of x, y, and z. 3, 1, minus 2. It lies in the second row. 3, 1, minus 2. Wow. Next. Third equation coefficients. Minus 1, 3, 1. It lies in the third row. Minus 1, 3, 1. Is the first matrix. Next one is a variables. How many variables here? Three variables. X, Y, Z. Is equal to the RHS. The RHS is the constant matrix. What is the value of these RHS? 15,000, 1000, 4000. It lies in RHS. 15,000, 1000, 4000. 15,000, 1,000, 4,000. Now it is of the form. Okay, it is of the form. Generally, if we take it is AX is equal to B. Here, what is the value of A? The first matrix is the value of A. The value of A to minus 4, 5. 3, 1, minus 2, minus 1, 3, 1. Is the value of A. And the value of the matrix X is X, Y, Z. Okay. The value of the matrix capital X is X, Y, Z. And RHS matrix is B. The value of the matrix B is 15,000, 1,000, and 4,000. So here yeah, the value of A, X, and B also. The next step, we write the formula. By matrix inversion method, the formula is 
Capital di x is equal to a inverse b. The solution is x is equal to a inverse b. What is the reason to write the formula first? We need how many matrices? So in x, we need two matrices. The matrices are a inverse and b, then the product. So the product of these two matrices are needed. First of all, we find integer matrices. The matrix B is already there. No problem. A inverse. We must find the matrix A inverse. A only is there. Using this A to find A inverse. If we find A inverse, first we find whose determinant. Okay, first we who determinants are needed. So the first step to find determinant. Determinant A. So determinant A. Determine C. First we find this determinant. You see the first two number symbol is always plus. So 2. 2 times half. We leave this column and this row. We multiply the elements. 1, 1, 0. 1. We multiply these two elements with a minus 7. So plus 6. Next. The symbol or sign of this number is minus Already one minus is there, so minus and minus is plus, so plus 4. Now we leave this row and this column. We multiply the elements first, 3 ones are 3. Next we multiply these two elements with a minus 3. So minus and minus is plus 2, but we put one minus, so minus 2. Next, plus 5. 5 of, we leave this row and that curve. We multiply this element, 3, 3, sir, 9. Then we multiply this two element with a minus. All three one minus is there, so minus and minus is plus, 1 one, sir, 1. 2, 1 plus 6 is 7. Plus 4, 3 minus 2 is 1. Plus 5 of, 9 plus 1 is 10. 2 7 sir, 14. 4 1 sir, 4. Plus 5 10 sir, 50. So the value of a determinant A is equal to 14 plus 4 is 18. 18 plus 50 is 68. So determined A value is 68. Next to find adjoint. If we need adjoint, first we find cofactor because it is a 3 by 3. The transpose of cofactor is nothing but adjoint. For our convenient, I again write A because we find the cofactor of each and every element. So the next rating we put cofactor of A. For our convenient, I write again A. So, cofactor of each and every element. What is the first element here? 2. So, to find cofactor of the element 2, the symbol of the number 2 is S. Okay, S. We leave first row and first column. We find the remaining values. 1, 1, sir. 1. We multiply this two element with a minus sign. So, plus 6. So, final answer is. 7. 1 plus 6 is 7, outside also plus. Next, cofactor of the next element is minus 4. So minus 4. The symbol of the number minus 4 is a minus. So minus of, we leave the number 4 occurring row and column. So it lies first row and second column. So we leave first row and second column. We multiply the remaining elements. First of all, 3 ones are 3. Next, minus 1 into minus 2, plus 2, but we put 1 minus, so minus 2. What is the final answer? Minus 4 occurring, second column and first row, 3, minus 2. Inside is a plus 1, but outside is 1, minus, so minus 1. Next, cofactor of the next element is a 5. The symbol of the number 5 is plus now we leave the number 5 occurring row and column. We leave first row and third column. 
We multiply these two elements first of all. 3, 3, sir. 9. We multiply these two elements with your minus n. So all your minus is there. Minus and minus is plus. 1 1 is 1. So e is plus 10. 9 plus 1 is 10. Outside is plus. Next. Co-factor of the next element is 3. The symbol of the number 3 is a minus. Now we leave first column and second row. Minus 4 into 1 is minus 4. We multiply these two elements with a minus. 3 by 15 it is a minus 15. 3, the number 3 occurring, this column and this row. Minus 4 into 1 is minus 4. 3 5 is 15, we put 1 minus. What is the final answer? It is a minus 19. Outside also 1 minus. So minus and minus is plus 19. Next, cofactor of 1. The symbol of 1 is plus. Now we leave the number 1 occurring row and column. It lies second column and second row. We multiply the remaining elements. First of all, 2 1s are 2. We multiply these two elements with a minus. Okay, minus 1 into 5 is minus 5. But we put 1 minus, so minus and minus is plus 5. 2 plus 5 is 7. Next, cofactor of minus 2. The symbol of the number minus 2 is minus. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So I put minus. Now we leave that my number minus 2 occurring row and column. So now we leave second row and third column. Second row and third column. First we multiply these two elements. 2, 3, sir, 6. Next, we multiply these two elements with a minus. Minus 1 into minus 4 plus 4. We put 1 minus. So minus 4. We check again. We leave this row and this column. 2, 3, sir, 6. And minus 4. What is the final answer? 6 minus 4 is 2. Outside 1 minus. So minus 2. Next. Co-factor of the next element is minus 1. The symbol of the number minus 1 is plus. We leave the number minus 1 occurring row and column. So now we leave third row and first column. We multiply this two element first of all minus 4 into minus 2 plus 8. Then we multiply this two element with a minus sign. So minus 5. Also is plus. 8 minus 5 is 3. Next we find cofactor of okay after minus 1. Next one is 3. Cofactor of 3. The symbol of the number 3 is minus. Now we leave the row and column occurring the number 3. So we leave second column and third. So we multiply first of all these two elements. 2 into minus 2 is a minus 4. We leave the number 3 occurring row and column. So we leave this column on this row. 2 into minus 2 is minus 4. Then we multiply these two elements with a minus sign. 3 by 15. We put 1 minus. So minus 15. The final number is plus 90. It's a minus 90. Outside also 1 minus. So minus and minus is plus 90. Next. Co-factor of the last element is 1. The symbol of the number 1 is plus. We leave the number 1 occurring row and column. We leave third row and third column. 2 ones are 2. We multiply these two elements with a minus sign. So plus 12. 2 plus 12 is 14. Outside is plus. So plus 14. Now we form a matrix. The matrix name is called cofactor of A. Co-factor of A. We know it is the first element. It lies in A11. It lies in A12. It lies in A13. So the first three elements lies in the first row. So 7 minus 1 
10. It lies in the first row. 7 minus 1, 10. Next, 3 element. 19, 7 minus 2. It lies in the second row. 19, 7 minus 2. Next, 3 element lies in the third row. First element is 3. Next one is 19. And the last one is 14. Actually, it is a value of cofactor of A. But we need adjunct. We write the formula. Adjunct A formula is cofactor of A transpose. So, adjunct A value is uh, directly I transpose. So, transpose of this matrix is called adjunct. Transpose, the row become column. So, the first row become first column. So, it become 7 minus 1, 10. And the second row becomes second column, 97 minus 2. 3, 90, 40. So, it is a value of adjunct. Now we use the adjoint and A inverse. Use the value of adjoint and determine A in A inverse. So again we write the formula of A inverse. You remain the formula of A inverse is 1 by determinant A into adjoint A. 1 by the value of a determinant A is 68 into adjoint A. 1 by determinant A value is 68 into adjoint A. The value of adjoint 7, 93. 7, 93. Second row, minus 1, 7, 19. Minus 1, 7, 19. Third row, 10. Minus 2, 14. Is a value of A inverse. Next, we use the value of this A inverse and B in X. Because the solution is X is equal to A inverse into B. We multiply A inverse and B is our required answer. X is equal to A inverse into B. So it is a value of A inverse. And it is a matrix B. Now we multiply these two matrix. You see, there is a big number. 15,000, 1,000 and 4,000. Suppose the number is B. We check any one is common. So if we take outside, the simplification process is easy. You see the matrix B. Any one is common. You see one number is common. The number is 1,000. Okay, in all the cases, 1,000 is common. So if we take outside, 1,000. So it becomes... 1000 by 68. 1 into 1000 is 1000 by 68. No change in first row. Minus 1, 7, 19. 10, minus 2, 40. So in the second matrix, we will be taking outside 1000. Then 15,000 become 15. 1000 become 1. 4000 become 4. Now we multiply these two matrices. You know very well. First will be take a first row and first column. Second row, first column. Third row, first column. Outside is a thousand by sixty-eight. You write as it is thousand by sixty-eight. Now we multiply. Seven into fifty. Seven fifteen sir. 7 5 is 35 5, minus 3, 1 7 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10. So 1 not 5. Next, we move in plus 19, 1. 19 1 is 19. Plus, we move in 3 4 is 12. So plus 19 plus 12. So first row, first column over. Next, second row, first column. Minus 1 into 15 is a minus 15. We move in. Plus 7 once a 7 plus 7. 
moving plus 19 force. So 19 force is 76 plus 76. Okay, 9 force are 36, 6, remainder 3, 1 force are 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. Now, third row, second, only one column, so third row, this column. 10, 15, 10, 15 is 150. Minus 2 is there, minus 2 in 1 is minus 2. Plus 14 force, 4 force are 16, remainder 1, 1 force are 4, 4 plus 4, 1 is 5. So, 56. Thousand by 68. Now, you see, there is a chance we cancel thousand by 16. It may be in second table for this. I don't simplify. Finally, I simplify. So, thousand by 16. Now, we add this. It's a 105. Okay, it's 105. 19 to an hour positive number, where we get 5 plus 9 is 14, 14 plus 2 is 16, our remainder is 1, 3, 1, so 136. Next, 190 number, 2 positive number, minus 15 plus 7 is actually minus 8, minus 8 plus 76, 76 minus 8 is exactly 68 okay minus 15 plus 7 i simplify this one is a minus 8 76 minus 8 okay 76 minus 8 is 68 150 plus 56 there will be two positive number the simplification is your choice first i add this two positive number i get 206 minus 2 so we get 204 You see, there is a relation between this number and the, that number. You see, the inside all values is a multiple of a 16. Is exactly one time. Okay? Is exactly twice. 2, 16 is a 136. And 2 not 4. 2 not 4 is also is a chance in 68. So now the next step, I multiply this denominator 68 inside. This denominator 68 is in inside. I keep 1000 outside as it is. 136 by 68. 68 by 68. You know very well in your matrix, outside any one scalar, that one is multiplied inside every element. Next, 204 by 68. Now we simplify this one. Outside 1000 is not changed. Exactly twice. 268 is 136. Is exactly 1. 68, 204. How many times is a chance? How many times? 68. 204 is exactly 3 times. We multiply 68 into 3. 83 sir. 24 4, remainder 2. 83 sir. 18. 18 plus 2 is 204. Is exactly 3 times. Now we multiply 1000 also inside. So LHS is already x. Okay, the LHS is X. The LHS is X. We simplify this one. So, X is equal to 1000. The next, we apply the value of X. The value of X is X, Y, Z. In RHS, I multiply 1000 inside. 1000 into 2 is 2000. 1000 into 1 is 1000. 1000 into 3 is 3000. So, A is 3000. Therefore, what is the value of X? A is 2000. Okay, the value of X is 2000. The value of Y is 1000. 
and the value of z is 3000. The value of z is 3000. But our question is not to find the value of x, y and z. To find the prices of each unit. Therefore, the prices of each unit of A, B and C. Okay, the prices of per unit of A, B and C. Okay, one unit is rupees x, one unit is rupees y and one unit is rupees z. Therefore, the prices per unit of A, B and C are rupees. First one is per unit of A is x, rupees 2000. Second unit is B is y, rupees 1000. And the third one is z is rupees 3000. And rupees 3000 respectively. So our question is not to find x, y, z, to find the per unit of A, B and C. Therefore, the commodity A per unit value is rupees 2000. The commodity B per unit value is 1000. And the commodity C per unit is 3000. 